I like to think that I don't have a very long list of enemies. Donkey Kong's at the top, he knows what he did. Gremlin Man doubted me, I reacted calmly. But on this short list is someone I don't even know, who I will never know, and who I hate every day. It's the first guy who used corny as a negative term. Who does this schmuck think he is? Also, who do you think it is? I'm looking for him, I just want to talk. Corny to me means that you're goofy, but you're trying so hard that you can't help but admire it without an ounce of irony. Some of my favorite things are hokey and corny. Sonic, pro wrestling, Metal Gear, I love them all because they're cheesy, not in spite of it. And I feel like we've tried way too hard to veer away from any genuine attempts that end up being really goofy. And nothing is more sincere about its silliness than Metal Wolf Chaos. Starting its development all the way back in 1776, Metal Wolf Chaos is the product of patriotism and desperation finally joining hands. Fast forwarding a hair to... 2001, and Microsoft was storming the scene with its killer new Xbox. The green machine had plenty of upsides, but one knock against it was the very company who made it. The Xbox was a smash hit in America, but in the second biggest market for video games, Japan, it was a much different story. The Xbox's reputation in Japan has always been of a squeaky third wheel. It's not trailing behind Nintendo and Sony, it's choking to death on their dust. Almost everything about the Xbox seems to have been custom built as the antithesis of a Japanese game console. It was massive and bulky, while the others were small and compact. Its library was full of shooters, which were far from the RPGs and platformers that were all the rage. It stood almost no chance in the region. Japanese game developers wouldn't make games for it because... We'll just look at it. Alright team, let's put all of our effort into making a game for the Xbox! Well, at least this has been a learning experience. How else would I figure out how to file for bankruptcy? Why release a game for a console that nobody wanted? It wasn't a safe move, and that's disregarding how dedicated Japanese developers can be to ignoring the Xbox. Companies like Square Enix and Bandai Namco were ride or die with Sony and Nintendo, with little to none of their games ever coming to the Xbox until the 360 rolled around. Microsoft needed to get a foothold in Japan, or else they'd lose out on a massive market. It, and the company that would finally answer their call? From Software. Now, you know From Software today. They're the guys who made you realize that games aren't your friends, and they were gonna be the ones to help the Xbox find an audience. But with a new console came opportunities to do new things. Instead of making a new entry in their established franchises like Armored Core or Kingsfield, they decided to let a smaller team tackle Billy's Box of Hard Knocks. This included hack and slash games like Otogi and simulators like Thousand Land. However, for their last Xbox game, FromSoft decided to throw all that subtlety out a window and make the most American game for the most American console developed in Japan. In an interview with director Masanori Takuma, Gucci at, I guess, the last ever E3 in 2019, he discussed the thought process that went into the development of this new game. It is America as perceived by the Japanese. It's completely fictional, but at the time, it was our idea of this ideology of American culture and comic book heroes. We think that when Japanese look at it that way, from the American point of view, it's almost like how they imagine a Japanese ninja and sort of the same ideologies. The same kind of fantasy, so it goes both ways. The name Metal Wolf Chaos was chosen, the only way it could have been, by having a Microsoft employee jam three cool sounding words together. This was set to be the biggest gaming release ever, but because of some stuff that isn't fun, the game would end up staying stuck in Japan. Blowing up American icons had gone out of vogue in the past couple of years, and the game was already a very, very late release for the Xbox. The 360 was either out already, or just on its way. This is a Greek tragedy. The most American game kept just out of reach on a region-locked console. How cruel can you get? For years and years, Metal Wolf Chaos would exist as an urban myth, a game that few got to play, and those that did had glowing praise for it. Around 2016, though, the howls for a modern re-release of Metal Wolf Chaos were getting louder and louder, spearheaded by honorary American Matt McMuscles. A close personal friend of mine, Matt got more and more people talking about Metal Wolf, and thankfully the right people were listening. Devolver Digital is my favorite publisher, because they'll look at any game and say, 
Yeah, sure, why not? Broforce, Hotline Miami, Ape Out, Luftfrausers, My Friend Pedro. We have to endure uh, baby steps every now and again, but I love this publisher, and who better to bring Metal Wolf back home? In 2018, they announced that Metal Wolf would be getting a remaster for modern consoles, with everything the original game had perfectly intact, as well as quality of life and graphical improvements. The hype for a Metal Wolf Chaos remaster came as a shock to Takauchi, who didn't understand why people wanted to play a decade-old Xbox game that they never even got in their region. <laughs> he just doesn't understand you like we do, baby. And now that years of yearning are finally over, all that's left to do is play it. And now comes the best part of any Metal Wolf playthrough. There are people out there who have never seen, played, or even heard of Metal Wolf Chaos. If you're one of those people, savor this moment. You play as 47th President of the United States, Michael Wilson, as the White House is sieged by coup d'etat forces led by Vice President Richard Hawk. In order to fight back, you pilot your mobile mech suit, Metal Wolf, and now it's up to you to fight across America, city by city, to liberate them from the coup d'etat forces and take back the White House. Not often you need a cigarette after hearing a plot summary. Metal Wolf is balls-to-the-wall insanity from the word go, with Michael leaping out of the Oval Office onto the front lawn of the White House. And as much as I hate to say it, we have our first negative. It's just a suit that Michael pilots. Sadly, Michael Wilson is not a giant robot president. In fact, he's not that giant at all. He's only a little bit taller than the average soldier when he's in the armor. The guns? Okay, that looks fucking ridiculous. Exactly what I wanted. <laughs> this pistol could choke a rhino. So the game throws you right into things. Get to Air Force One and get out of there. And the game controls really, really well. Michael isn't a baby, so he's pretty good at walking, has a high jump and his jetpack that can be used to dash and hover. The dash runs out this bar here pretty quickly, but to keep it going you can sacrifice your health up to a point to keep it going. These green blocks here represent your health in reserve, and if you run out your campaign goes bust. As for all that weaponry, you can have up to eight different guns at a time, dual wielding two at once, with certain guns requiring both hands. You have pistols, shotguns, machine guns, sniper rifles, rocket launchers, and so much more, with each weapon class having different variations in them, like a shotgun that shoots out a shield, and a rocket launcher whose rockets snake along the ground. I can't really compare how this feels to the standard Armored Core gameplay, but if it plays anything like Metal Wolf, I'm really excited to try out the rest. As for this level, though, it gives you plenty of freedom to learn all that Michael can do, but when you're done, you gotta underground and hold off waves of grunts while Air Force One gets prepared to take off. As you can guess, being two tons of steel with the power of a nation behind him means not a lot is gonna get in Michael's way. Most gunfire bounces right off of him, but explosives can shred your health very fast. We hop aboard the plane, and before we can get away, it happens. Like they were ever invited, they're definitely- Michael! <laughs> And thus, the greatest love story ever told began. So we're out of White House, and the nation's been plunged into martial law, so we're gonna go city by city to take back the nation. But instead of campaigning and kissing babies, we're gonna kill every living thing in front of us. My campaign is built on honesty. All we have to accomplish that is a Gundam that runs on freedom, enough firepower to wipe Delaware off the map, and our stalwart secretary, Jody. Now, I've paid taxes, regardless of what the government says, so I'm not really the sort of person who would have a waifu. But if I had to have one, it would be Jody. I love this woman, because the nation she lives in and works for has been plunged into total anarchy, and she just doesn't really treat it like a big deal. Jody is the second best part of the game. I think the stress of the job got to her, and now she just says whatever's on her mind. So before we even get to the first proper level, I'd like to introduce our brand new long-running segment, Weird Shit That Jody Says, featuring Michael. That bad boy needs a presidential diet. I guess he's had too much junk food. Any email from the resistance? Yes, there is. The man's voice is as cool as ever. Metal Wolf crushed? And those phony visuals! What's with that? The special effects don't even beat a Hollywood B-movie! This mission goes by the call name... 
Metropolitan Recapture Operation from Cisco Sighted Road. The first stop is in San Francisco to free the people that Richard is storing in cages and blow up all the crap that he left behind. I don't think Richard wants to run America, I think he just wants to turn it into a giant gun he can point at Canada. This level sets the standard for most stages in the game. To advance, you're gonna need to take out target areas by blowing them up, rescue hostages, and collect money and metal to develop new weapons. The target areas are where you do your fighting, drifting around to avoid missiles and landing your shots where you can to take him down. Word to the wise, though, the best way to take him out and conserve ammo for later is to do a stomp. Uh, by jumping, you can rocket down to the ground and crush anything under you, and it's really useful for keeping the heat off you when enemies get too close and makes destroying buildings a breeze. If you don't want to use those, you can also use rockets and grenades to great effect, but, uh, take my word on this one. Uh, but don't try that with the hostages doesn't end well. There are dozens of hostages per stage, and the more you save, the higher a score multiplier you get at the end. And you don't just earn any points, you earn PRESIDENT POINTS! It also increases the amount of money you get, but money is fleeting. Points are forever! You can break open hostage cages with gentle shotgun blasts and minigun fire, but using rockets, grenades, or your entire body weight will kill them. It's a good idea to make a beeline for them whenever you see or hear one, since the longer they stay out in the open, the more likely they are to be killed. It's purely optional, but what a sh tier president you would be if you did, and I will put you in Buchanan tier, I mean it! That money and metal you collect goes towards gun crafting. In between levels, you can take some time to research and manufacture new guns. Each branch can be upgraded eight times until eventually you have an insanely strong arsenal. But you don't get enough money to upgrade it all at once. You have to work at a single branch for a while before you get the heavy artillery. My suggestion is to find a level that you like and grind it out for money for a while so you can get the best items. Focus on machine guns for strong rapid fire, shotguns for crowd control, grenade launchers for building destruction, and rocket launchers for killing things. As for San Francisco, it's as basic a starting level as you could hope for. Get complacent and you'll pay for it. But as long as you're paying attention, you won't have much trouble. It introduces some new obstacles early, like civilian cages with bombs that are rigged to explode if you get too close to them, which you have to take out from a distance, as well as much beefier tanks that will kill you quick if you don't stay mobile. I will warn anybody looking to try this game out, though, uh, this is... Kinda it. Each level has its own unique twist on how you metal wolf, but as for base movements, all the cards are pretty much on the table. If it doesn't gel with you, sorry, it's just not the game for you. If it does, though, god you're in for a treat. This level's unique twist is having the first fight where Michael Wilson takes on the infrastructure problems in America. Head on! The enemy forces have usurped the building, making it a target. The building was opened two years ago on April 25th. It's named the Haokan Denkai China Building. Each season it's decorated with gorgeous lights. Their Christmas tree tops them all. Over 800,000 people came to see it last December. For such a long time, I have been wondering how lovely that gorgeous building would look if it were destroyed. I feel bad for the owner, but hey, let's smash the hell out of it! After fist fighting a building and winning, though, we get a much less favorable matchup against the Dorsey Super Tank. The secondary weapons, like the guns and missiles, are one thing, but the tank's main weapon is a massive laser cannon that will almost certainly kill you if it hits. The tank is really tough if you don't save up your missiles and focus on shooting rockets out of the sky, but when the chips are down, Michael does have one last trump card. HOW DO YOU LIKE ME NOW?! When Michael feels like it, he can charge up the forces of the three branches of the government to fire every weapon in his backpack at once to deal loads of damage. It doesn't take ammo, it's as powerful as your weapon loadout, and Michael screams at the top of his lungs when he does it. I love everything about it. It's also an auto win against a lot of bosses who seem to have trouble being shot repeatedly by a pissed off commander in chief. With the tank absolutely demolished and San Fran not in much better shape, Michael declares this a job well done and 
flies off to the next city. You get a grade at the end of each stage, but God help you if you can get above a C. This thing is super strict. Guys, please don't tell my mom I got a D on my chain combo points if she finds out I'm so grounded. When you finish a level, you get a quick chat between Jody and Michael to keep us updated on how the fight's going across this great nation. It's in these moments we get the most dialogue, and I suppose there's no pussyfooting around it anymore. Metal Wolf Chaos has the best voice acting in any game. Every single line is spoken like the script is being faxed to the actors in real time. It's all stilted, none of it's natural, the intonation on every single line is wrong, and I love all of it. Metal Wolf without the voice acting is a pretty fun mech game. With it, though, it becomes something so much better. Should I call this voice acting what it is, objectively really bad? No, because it's amazing and I love it. The script is so cheesy and stupid, but the actors never treat it like that. They treat everything like it's a life or death situation, and it makes the game feel so much more genuine. There are very, very few times where the game winks at the audience to let them in on the joke. For the most part, the game is played completely straight, and it makes these deliveries so much more funny. It's one thing to hear it in a YouTube compilation, it's another thing entirely to hear it while you're actually playing the game. The best part, which surprises everybody who hears it, is how this is the only dub of the game. There isn't a good Japanese dub of the game, and thank God for it! If people had choices, they might make the wrong one! This isn't a localization snafu or people just not knowing what they wanted. This was always the original vision for the game. Speaking of that game, we can get right back to playing it after a hearty dose of propaganda. After certain levels, you'll get a clip from the state-sanctioned news station where they twist our liberation of San Francisco as an attack that killed innocent people. They didn't have to do a lot of editing to make it look realistic. Metal Wolf's pilot is meaner than Satan himself. We're now public enemy number one as we head out to free the USA. Michael armed with his mobile suit and Jody armed with her variety of ways to say, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President! Mr. President! Smash the island prison. The latest Richard Hawk scheme may be the most short-sighted, as he plans on using a massive cannon built on the Alcatraz Island to destroy the entire West Coast. I guess he's too impatient to wait for the fault lines to take care of that. If we want to stop him from destroying half the country that he is in charge of, we have to destroy the cannon before it can charge up and fire. And to do that, we have to destroy the charging stations to delay the blast. I'll smash it faster than a Florida recount. The timer at the top shows how long you have until an automatic loss, but destroying the charging station sets the cannon back about 5% for each one you destroy. Before you can destroy one, though, we get a visit from Peter McDonald. He's the newscaster for DNN that's publishing all the articles calling us a terrorist, and it looks like he's come to get a closer look at Metal Wolf in action. Oh no! Look at that heinous bastard stopping a massive laser from roasting the entire western half of the United States like a marshmallow! In this reporter's humble opinion, someone should kill him! And it looks like that's gonna have to be me. Since the level is all on cliff sides, it's really easy to fall off, either by explosion or sheer incompetence. Getting across the stage is a tightrope of making sure to stay far enough away from the sides to avoid falling to your death, but also avoiding the traps that litter the ground. You can actually avoid this tunnel of mines by hopping on the roof above and running across, but if you go down there, you'll find out this game's weird damage system. I've got no clue how to explain this accurately, but the more damage you take, the more damage you take. What I mean is that the more you get hit in succession, the more damage you take, so two hits done in sequence will keep doing more damage than the last. It took me a while to figure out what exactly was happening, but when your health goes from this to this, you have to know that something fishy's going on. 
After destroying the charging stations, you make the final siege on the cannon itself, where you see the next type of enemy, these other mechs. They're like you, but hate liberty. These guys are a lot trickier than your standard grunt or tank. By holding up their forearm, they can block any and all gunfire, but by stomping on them, you can break their guards and go back in for more damage. Once you get past him, you gotta keep firing until the whole area is reduced to rubble, and you can stop the cannon. Hey, I just had a thought. The, uh, the cannon's already pointed at the west coast. Like, it can't swivel, so this is only meant to kill California. Actually, what were you even meant to use this on? The closest country to Alcatraz is Kiribata, which is over 4,000 miles away, and the cannon is clearly too strong. Ah, uh, now see, folks, this is someone who uh, just doesn't get it. With the Alcatraz cannon destroyed, we get an email from a resistance leader who's trying to gather up patriots to stop Richard and his cannon campaign to kill every single person in the country out of pettiness. Mr. President, I haven't been this happy since, since that supermarket going out of business sale. When I was searching for my favorite candy, and I found the last box all covered in dust at the back of the rack. And the expiration date was still good. Bring fashion back to the streets. Our freedom campaign has brought us to the streets of Beverly Hills, where Richard has planted bombs to destroy the entire city. It's up to us to harmlessly detonate them by blowing them up with even bigger explosions. Got a hornet's nest in your yard? Nothing me and my hornets can't handle. These bombs have massive explosion areas, are triggered by getting too close, and the main gimmick for the level can't be seen until you take out these scrambling towers that block out the map. As long as these are up, you won't have any idea where the more well-hidden bombs are. But once you get it back, you can, uh... Huh. Oh, why, why is this one getting closer? Oh, God! Yeah, some soldiers, I guess, regret joining up with the world's most evil chin-strap beard and one out of Richard Hawk's America. They'll drive the bombs to you with trucks, and these things are really hard to get away from, since they'll drive through whatever they have to to get to you. This level can be a bit of a frustrating one, since the bombs can reduce your health fast if you don't take care and avoid using short-range weaponry. Pistols and shotguns? No. Sniper rifles and bazookas are your friends here, but even then, it's not a good idea to shoot around all willy-nilly. Lots of the bombs are close to civilian cages, and blowing them up will turn out pretty poorly. The level can be a bit of a hassle to get around, though. Bombs can be really spaced out, and it takes a while to get from one to another. Some civilian cages can also be hidden in annoying places, like high up on roofs, that only sniper rifles can get to. Not to say that I don't like the level, for those who want to get a lot of money for new weapons, this is the stage to go to. The bombs create a very real sense of anxiety since you can easily lose a lot of health early on and struggle for the rest of the time. The further in you go, the tighter knit the bombs become, so you either have to take extra special care to avoid blowing them all up and killing the civilians, or just do it anyway. What are the ashes gonna tell on me? After saving the city by getting rid of all the bombs, or more accurately, maliciously destroying the military's controlled explosives test, we get another message from the resistance to let us know that the efforts are going well, and we're getting close to taking back the first half of the country. <laughs> I feel like a mother hen here. Operation Arizona, blood and gunpowder smoke. Now it's time to take back America's number one hole, and this place has a lot of sentimental value. This was one of the battlefields that the Great Arizona Insurrection was fought on, the war that both Richard and Michael fought in, and before you ask, yes, they both had mechs in that one too. Since the army is using the same guerrilla bases from back in the war, they're very well hidden, so to find all the prisoners, we gotta search the stage high and low. The level is a lot like Alcatraz, where it's full of narrow pathways to keep your footing on, but a few new tools help out with that. First is the railgun. It's a super slow weapon which takes an ice age to charge and takes up the same meter your boost does to charge it to its fullest. But when it does finally charge... God, I love amendments. The mission has a much higher concentration of helicopters than before, given how open air things are, and it gets a whole lot worse when the boss comes out to play. Mr. President, a fresh supply of troops is coming. So you're Metal Wolf, eh? Then you can die for Sir Richard. 
Oh, God damn it, he has a gimmick. Castina is a boss that you can face in one of two ways. Depending on how confident you are in your firepower, you can either take him on as soon as he shows up, or more likely, if you want to play it safe and get a better angle, you can run through this tunnel system and over bridges to get on top of him. I think one of the best things Metal Wolf Chaos does is when a stage is built around a boss fight like this one is. There are plenty more after it that give you a great sense of how dangerous the boss is when the whole level is either fighting it or running away until you're ready to fight it. For Castina here, you never actually have to fight him. The stage can be cleared just the same if you clear out all the target areas, but how are we supposed to know if he likes us now or not if I don't ask? Taking Castina out leaves us to take out the final target area, with you and your opponent both on these flimsy platforms that break when hit with an explosive. If you plan it out right, you can take out those supports in a flash, but they can do the same right back to you. After suplexing Hoover Dam to death, we get some time to look back on all the hard work we've done. You know what? I'm done being a coward. I'm gonna tell Jody exactly how I feel. I mean, the worst she can say is no, right? War really doesn't suit these lovely surroundings. Jody. Nor someone as lovely as you. Sure, whatever. Nice work, Mr. President. <laughs> oh god, that was so much worse. My darling Clementine operation. The next mission takes us to the suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona. Suburbs. Not much time to admire the atmosphere, though, since before we can get to work, we get dogpiled by three massive mechs. The three of them are Michael's old subordinates from back in the Arizona insurrection, and they've been tasked with taking out their former commander. This is like starring in John Ford's My Darling Clementine. Wanna find out who gets to play Wyatt Earp? Not only are the three of them invisible, but they've got way more firepower than you do. Trying to take them on as is, is lunacy, so for now, you just have to run away. The only way to weaken the three of them to the point that you can take them on is by taking out the tower that's cloaking them and scrambling your map. After that, all you gotta do is divide and conquer. Even then, just one of the mechs is a lot to deal with, and you have to remain mobile because if a second one shows up, you don't stand a chance. Like how I said with Castina in the last mission, Metal Wolf has really inventive uses for boss fights, and this might be my favorite one in the whole game. From the start of the level, you're just a dust mite to these guys. The only reason they can't kill you is because you're better at running away. Slowly, though, you build up the resources to take them on, and then finally pick them off one by one until you come out on top. It's so satisfying to climb your way up the food chain one by one, working harder than you ever have before to scrape by with a win. It also has some of the best emotional moments in the game too, since Michael's old war buddies don't want to fight him and feel bad about having to do so. It's not a whole lot, but for a game with a title made with bananagrams, it was more than I was expecting. This level is absolutely one of my favorites. It's got such a neat structure to it, and coming back time after time to test yourself and your weapons is so much fun! Just, uh, don't come back to this level for grinding purposes if you want the impact of their deaths to remain, because, uh... Hero in an old way- Major! Shark! Ah! How'd you let him get you? You really are that- Ah, how stupid! Wow, the faster I kill them, the worse I feel! This is awful! With that, we've successfully taken back the western part of the United States. Richard sees this and fights back with the ultimate weapon. He made a video where we look like a punk. Talking over this will get me sent to hell, so we're gonna sit down and listen. You enemy of the people, I, Richard Hawk, won't let you get away with it. I, Richard Hawk, will uphold American justice without fail. Yeah! Suck on my missile punch! I won't lose! And the reason- 
reason is I, Richard Hawk, am the last great American hero. This is our first real taste of Richard Hawk, and when I said that Jody was the second best part of the game, Richard is the first. Richard Hawk is closer in DNA to a cartoon chipmunk than a vice president. He's so utterly insane that he can barely hold a conversation without bursting out into his evil supervillain laugh. He's like a revengeance boss hopped up on democracy and hard drugs, and I love him. Every time Richard speaks, I stop and just listen, because he's so captivating to listen to. Hear him try and justify his horrible plans, taunting Michael. As far as rival characters go, he's hard to beat. Even though the video he just showed was a fake cooked up to make us look bad, which weird that there was back and forth, but it worked like a charm since the resistance forces in the east have been totally crushed. Michael also says Richard's up to his old tricks again, which means that he's well known for making AMVs of him kicking the crap out of people he doesn't like. Now more than ever, we need to believe in our own justice if we want to take down Richard and bring peace back to these great United States. A lovely and clear sea once more. Well, things are getting goofy on this side of the Mississippi, since Miami has been turned into a port city for Richard to funnel white slaves out of the country. I don't know what to do with that information. Better stop, it sounds nasty. If we want to stop the plan, we're gonna need to take out a Navy cruiser in Miami Bay, but that's gonna be hard since it's stuffed to the gills with high power weaponry. You can see it from the start of the level, which means we're in missile range. On the run up to fight it, you're gonna be hammered with long range missiles, but by destroying the target areas, you can lower the missile's accuracy and help yourself dodge them. On top of a constant carpet bombing, the beach itself isn't safe either, since it's covered in stationary mines and also crab mines. Whoa! That didn't surprise me one bit. Once you get past the traps and missiles, you come face to face with the massive cruiser and its captain, Robert Forrester. Metal Wolf, I don't know what you're up to. Or who is inside of there. But I can tell you this, you're... Your public enemy number one. So it's Metal Wolf versus Battle Cruiser, and the fight is about as daunting as it looks. You're gonna need to bring some major firepower if you want to stand a chance, and it's not going to end well if you show up without a lot of explosives. If you don't, you have to chance getting closer with a gun, but then you're at danger of falling into the water and losing automatically. Not that I would know anything about that. The best to try to tackle it with an explosive weapon like a grenade launcher or a bazooka, and a machine gun to try to shoot the missiles out of the sky before before they hit you, and to also free the white slaves dotted around the ship. I didn't forget. While it takes me an eternity to try to pick this thing apart, I want to briefly touch on the soundtrack. It's one of the strangest parts of the game. Save for a few stages, every one sounds distinct, and almost none of them sound like they came from the same game. This level has a lot of saxophone. The in-between mission chats have weird chanting, rap, hip-hop, synth, classical, just like this great melting pot of a country, Metal Wolf welcomes any and all musical genres onto this roller coaster ride. As for the battle cruiser, they seem to not like how I am now and sink to the bottom of the ocean. Hopefully all those white slaves wash up on the beach sooner or later. Oh no, I killed the guy who gave me my catchphrase! Despite our big victory, we still aren't able to contact the resistance forces, which means we're gonna have to face whatever comes next all on our own. Winner takes all, Olajuwon versus Metal Wolf. 
So just like before with our fights against the battle cruiser, this whole stage is about fighting the boss, except this time it's the stupidly built Elijah One helicopter. Peter gives it a rundown like he's selling you a grill in an infomercial. What on earth could you possibly be so afraid of that you need to build something like this? Well, it's falling out of the sky, so who looks stupid now? In order to get the Elijah One in murder range, we need to take out some target areas to ground it. Mr. President, it's time to pardon the presidential turkey. Please destroy all the target areas. Thanks to the Elijah One's firepower, you're gonna be surrounded by explosives that chew through your health bar. And that's only one of its weapons. There are dozens of mechs that come down to fight as well, and they're packing bigger guns than you've ever seen before. Add on to that the crab mines and armored tanks, and just getting to the Elijah is already a Herculean feat. Then when it does descend onto the battlefield, it gets way crazier. Most weapons barely scratch him. He even has an answer for how he likes us now. Oh god, he doesn't! You really have to prepare for the long game when you fight the Elijah One, picking your shots and making them count, which gets harder and harder when it follows you around the battlefield. Its mini gunfire tears through any cover, while the missiles make quick work of idle mechs. The best time to strike it is when it's parked in the bay, since you get a good chance to attack the missiles and deal some real damage. Do it a few times, and Elijah 1 will be grounded permanently, and the day will once again be saved. I love the fight with the Elijah One. More than any other battle in the game, it's a real war of attrition. Fight back and forth for control as it bounces back and forth over and over, but if you play smart, you'll overcome it. News from the rest of America isn't getting much better, with the cruel oppression of America's people only getting worse as Richard's empire crumbles around him. Only two major cities left before we take the fight back to DC, and we get our country back. Chicago Daybreak. Oh no, that's where the Bean lives! So Chicago saw a tyrannical dictatorship coming for them and just decided to ignore it. So to make them bend to his will, Richard's planning on gassing the entire city to death. <laughs> well, if it isn't the heinous terrorist, public enemy number one, Richard! Oh, you've done excellent work, Michael. How about a reward to show my appreciation? Poison gas will annihilate the city in five minutes. And Metal Wolf will be blamed for the slaughter of Chicago. Have a nice day, uh, or not, Michael. <laughs> You know, Metal Wolf Chaos is actually really hard to talk about. I'm constantly worried that the game is a lot more interesting than me, so what the heck am I gonna say? So we've gotta destroy the target areas in order to stop the gas before it reaches 180 parts per million or else the entire city will be destroyed. The gas is the most strict time limit in the game. If you try to take the time and find collectibles in the stage and save the hostages, you're gonna run out of time super fast. It's probably the only stage aside from the Alcatraz cannon where the time limit is an actual worry. It's a good thing, then, that the Chicago train system gives you a skeleton you can use to easily get from one part of the stage to the next. There are no extra bells or whistles to the level aside from the timer, which means it can afford to get a lot more creative with its layout, including a parking garage you need to fight your way up, and a bridge you have to dash across before it retracts. If you're going for 100% completion, though, Chicago is one of the worst stages in the game. That timer is super strict, and with how well hidden some hostages are, you're gonna be stuck dashing around trying to go purely based off sound to find them. Once you clear out all the gas, Peter does his best spin job yet by saying that somehow Metal Wolf destroying the gas that he unleashed was all part of his evil plan. Well, I was real married to the gas idea at first, but it's a bit goofy, so I just went back to shooting people. Hey, you gotta give Peter one thing, though. His reporting results in the best quote in the entire game. Among the Chicago survivors was a little girl who told reporters at the time, as the gas was closing in, I looked up and saw God. And you know what? God is made of steel. I love Metal Wolf, man. It's so beautiful. The only thing more beautiful is hearing that the citizens are finally waking up to Richard's evils. Only now waking up to Richard's evils. The bombing Beverly Hills, the toy helicopter, white slavery. Oh, but you mess with the deep dish pizza. Now we got issues. Operation. 
Operation We Love NYC. Our final target is New York City. Okay, that hardly seems fair. Talk about massive arm. What is that? Carnival ride? Ooh, hello, hello, hello. Hello, Michael. How's life treating you? Richard. What do you think of my cute little pet? Thanks to him, the people of New York City are right now festively uh, running around and trying to escape. <laughs> uh, it's like a big old carnival. It's like Mardi Gras in New York or something. <laughs> you are a sick. Take a bite from its super energy wave phasers. It'll get you high enough to reach heaven. Richard! Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> So we gotta take on the next of Richard's dozen or so spider mechs, and this one's gonna be the hardest to squash. Daddy Longlegs is durable as heck on its own, but the fight gets way harder when you see its main weapon. If that beam hits you head on, no chance. You're either gonna be dead or on your last legs. Fighting Daddy Longlegs head on isn't an option with the weapons you have, so you have to slink by in the back alleys of New York from target area to target area to get rid of the mech's shield and try to do some real damage. Damage. If you really want to take the pressure off, though, you're gonna want to take out the Times Square Fortress that powers the cannon. It's heavily guarded and where Daddy Longlegs spends most of its time, but by using yourself as bait, you can lure him away and take out the area to disable the laser beam. Fighting Daddy Longlegs is a blast, since just like the bosses before him, like Elijah 1 and the three mechs back in Arizona, you're on the back foot for the whole thing, and only by playing smart can you take him out. Metal Wolf doesn't have many parts you would call smart, so the fact that there are bosses that actually get you to work out that brain is impressive in and of itself. Not that the level is flawless. Destroying the Times Square Fortress often leaves you helpless in a cutscene, which Daddy Longlegs can use to fire an undodgeable laser at you and kill you instantly. Fun. However, killing Daddy Longlegs means we're finally back where it all started. It's time to take back the White House and stop Richard. At least it would be if Richard didn't have a big button on his desk that says do genocide and puts out a new ad. Citizens of the United States of Richard, if you or anybody you know has thought about Michael Wilson in the past four years, please turn yourself in for immediate re-education. For those who do not comply, we're gonna f***ing kill you! We're gonna kill you, your family, your barber, we're gonna take your dog to the newly formed Richard Hawk Dog Pound, get our biggest, euthaniziest needle, and shove it in his eye! Paid for by Richard Hawk. Mwah! Unfortunately, since Jody and the rest of our cabinet don't want their families to get slaughtered by Richard, they turn themselves in, and for the first time, we're all alone. But in these dark times, there's one person who remains by our side. That's because they're a thorn in it. Richard talks about how he wants to cull the weak so the strong can inherit America and make it better than it ever was before. A rallying cry for all psychotic video game politicians, it seems. He's also rigged up an elaborate death trap to kill Jody and all of our friends, which we can only stop by meeting him on Liberty Island. I'll head to Liberty Island to rescue my men. And the reason is because I'm the president of this great United States of America. Mr. President, why did you come to save us after we betrayed you? Jody, I can't turn my back on a friend. And the reason is I'm the president of the United States. Mr. President, don't come near! It's a trap! <laughs> hey there, Michael. Are you still playing the hero? Richard! You just don't get it, do you? Freedom is dead! You and your men and this symbol of freedom We'll all perish! So Richard's starting to lose it. It's up to us to stop him from using a massive tank to blow up the Statue of Liberty and our presidential staff. 
It's the simplest level in the game. All you have to do is destroy the tank before it can blow up the Statue of Liberty, but this thing has a comical amount of firepower. Six missile launchers, machine guns, bazookas, a laser cannon, and once you get to the second phase, it adds a row of buzz saws to the front while trying to run you down. It's ridiculous, but god does it feel cool to rip it apart bit by bit. This isn't like Elijah One or Daddy Long Legs. There's no thought or tactic that goes into fighting the tank. You just just shoot it until it goes away. <laughs> Round two! This wild dog of war is on the move, Michael! He'll bite you if you don't move it! Now hightail it out of here! <laughs> oh! I almost forgot! Time for my afternoon tea! Nothing like sipping some delicious Darjeeling tea and watching you getting your clock cleaned. <laughs> Seriously, I'm playing second fiddle to Richard here, it's not fair. The second phase is more of the same, except to keep the statue safe, the resistance leader finally shows back up and blocks the shots using him and his helicopters. That means your job is just to finish off the tank, but the only thing fighting harder to kill you than Richard is the level itself. As cool as I'd wish the fight with the tank was, this level leaves a lot to be desired. The auto-aim doesn't want to focus on the missile launchers and will instead uselessly unload lead into the body, which barely scratches it. The tank tears through the environment, which means that if you're standing in the wrong spot, you drop to your death super fast. Then when the awe of the boss's scope wears off, you realize just how little there is to do and the impossible happens. It gets kind of boring. This is the weakest level in the game, especially on repeats where all that wonder you had from the first time turns into wondering how exactly you're meant to kill this thing quickly. However, even if the boss and level are a drag, it's worth it. Whatever. Ready for the scrap heap. Is it bad I was disappointed Lady Liberty didn't become a mech too? Now that Jody and the rest of our gang is back together, it's time to show the nation who's in charge by taking back our house. I'm home. Operation White House. Time to take the White House back from Richard, but starting above ground would be suicide, so we gotta start below the surface in the base beneath the White House. Imagine thinking this doesn't mean you're gonna blow up target areas. Except these target areas are a little more special, since each one of them is themed after one of the areas you've been to before. This one has gas from the Chicago levels, as well as the reactors from the Alcatraz cannon. This one's got bombs and jamming devices from Beverly Hills. This one's just a bit boring, let's call that Chinatown, it's neat to see how far you've come. Connecting these bits are long hallways filled with mines and turrets you gotta dash through, which really makes this level an endurance round. This section may be tough, but it's just to soften you up. For the real challenge, you gotta go topside. <laughs> They shouldn't they call shouldn't it the, call White, the House. White House. They should call they it should the fight. Shut up, Jody! That was my joke! I thought of it 20 minutes ago! So for our last fight against a building, we're taking on the White House, which Richard has decked out in armor because it would be fucking stupid if it was the only thing that didn't look fucking stupid. In an unusual move for this game, you've actually got to exercise caution and not blast the building to bits, since the White and Fight Houses have their own health bars. Destroying the armor decreases the Fight House's health, while hitting the main body damages the White House. The White House is super fragile, so avoid wide-firing weapons like shotguns and explosives and try for something a bit more accurate. Destroying the White House is seen as a negative for some reason, and if you blow it up, you gotta go through the whole maze in the basement over again, so please, for the love of God, be careful! The capital is ours again, the nation is almost free, and the only loose end left is Richard. 
Good luck and Godspeed, Mr. President. Richard, come out! <laughs> oh, Michael, you're so sweet. Richard! And for that, I owe you. You canceled all my dreams and plans. So now I've got a nice little present for you. Here! Let me ask you one last thing. What do you want on your tombstone? What do you want it to say, huh, Michael? So, before Richard even gives you the privilege of fighting him, you're taking on the helicopter and tank bosses at the same time. Now that you've gotten a small nation's worth of firepower on your back, it's not the toughest thing in the world, but that's the crazy part. Two bosses, at once, and you smoke them both in no time. Helps that, uh, the, 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 the tank driver's just a little stupid. Bravo, Michael! What lovely footwork! Richard! Now try dancing with me! This show's gonna run all night! Once they're dealt with, you chase Richard into the luxury Las Vegas casino to start the fight proper. Richard's mobile attack suit, model Richard, is just as powerful as Metal Wolf, with tons of the same weapons and capabilities, like the dash. Fighting Richard can be a bit daunting, since if you're not doing your best, Richard will be doing better. He can be hard to track sometimes since he's not massive like every other enemy, but the casino floor actually helps out a lot, since he's gonna be smashing through machines and sending money flying everywhere. Follow the paper trail and you'll be able to keep track of Richard. Sweet, sweet. Oh, you are so sweet, Michael. Like gulping a cup of condensed milk. Think you can kill me, huh? Once you damage him enough, Richard will retreat deeper into the casino while you have to save a few hostages. Thank God they don't have you fighting Richard while collecting hostages because I would not be getting their vote if that was the case. Richard, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> you coward. Coward? Michael! You gonna complain? He's a coward. I can't win. So shoot me, Michael. Or are you a chicken? Oh, imagine that, solving a problem by blowing it up. Not my Michael Wilson. Once he lands, it's more of the same battle from before, except now there's less cover and Richard's less likely to run away. These two phases are an absolute blast, the standard for what a good rival fight should be. You and Richard have the exact same moveset, so it all comes down to who uses it better, and when you can finally overcome him and take the victory, it feels fantastic. Except you don't get the victory just after that phase, there's one more. How lovely, eh, Michael? Doesn't knowing that it all ends here kind of get your adrenaline going? Richard! Michael! We've got the stage all to ourselves. It ends here. It's more of the great one-on-one -on -one action from the last phases, except when he loses enough health, then he fires his absolute zero cannon. And if you aren't moving well before this non-telegraphed attack fires, it's an instant kill forcing you to start the level all over again. Michael, looks like you were fresh out of justice tonight, eh? Could you look after me from heaven? I love you, honey. <laughs> this isn't a move you can plan for or dodge effectively. Just hope you were moving before it starts, and then if you can keep the dash up, then you can start fighting again. This is his last ditch effort attack too, so it's the last thing he's likely to do before you win. Which means the last possible thing that could happen in the stage is a nearly unavoidable instant kill that forces you to start the level all over again and fight four boss fights from the beginning. Weak, pathetic. Killing you is easier than breaking.
breaking a baby's arm. If you can avoid it, this level is fantastic and one of the best in the game. If you get hit with it twice and have to do the level three times, f**k this level. Now that Richards lost the battle here, he decides to flee to the one place not corrupted by Michael Wilson and his love of not gassing the innocent. Well, the moon really isn't my jurisdiction. It's not part of the United States. Yet! Look out, you big round bastard! I'ma call you Wisconsin too! That's right. To finish off the story, Metal Wolf's going to space to finish off Richard once and for all. This mission goes by the call name... <laughs> Believe in your own justice. Richard! Chasing 15 million feet after me. Now that's love. Well, I love you too, Michael. I love you so much, I can't stand it. So much, I want to kill you. This is the big finale. Time for the culmination of this massive journey we've been on and the game makes sure to dust off its Sunday best for the occasion. That's right, no target areas. There are target items. But that's not the same thing. To get to them, you gotta ride up on this space elevator all the way to the top to catch Richard. It moves pretty slowly, but will stop and stay in place if you hop off to collect hostages. Oh, space hostages! There are mechs that come to fight you on the elevator, but just ignore them. You're the president, you have more important stuff to do. Getting to the top, and you find 2023's greatest invention, shield generators on the outside of the shield. Gold star to the designer. Once you get past that, Richard unleashes his ultimate weapon called... This is the guy who named his mech the same thing as yours, but just added his name. What did you expect? And holy hell is this fight hard! It has the Richard trademark of a giant instant kill laser, but on top of that, there are just so many missiles. Just trying to get close to him is a challenge in and of itself. Your weapons can barely dent the armor, so staying in its sights will end the fight very quickly. Luckily, the ultimate weapon seems to have a bit of a problem getting past exactly this piece of the environment, so hiding here can save you a lot of headaches. Once you build up enough energy, you can do a burst attack, which might get you to the second phase, but the problems only get worse from there. Now it's time for my wild card! Stop shaking in your heels, senorita, and fight like a man! And now, for the finale! You have to be really careful to aim and hit the parts without any shields, otherwise you'll just chew through your ammo and make the fight even harder. Start out with the rockets and hope the auto-aim can land a few good shots for you. Make sure to never sit still, otherwise you're totally dead. Not even what seems like solid terrain will keep you safe for long. Except for this, this is still good. Once you whittle his health down to the last bit, Richard decides to use the nuclear option and plans on blowing up the planet with a nuke the size of a battleship. And you only have 25 seconds to celebrate after killing him in five! This is just a victory lap and there to get you ready for the game's last cutscene. Richard! At that speed and angle... He'll burn up like a shooting star! I'm going in! Im impossible! Not even you can possibly stop a shooting star! Jody, who am I? I'm the president! I always make the impossible possible, and I'm gonna keep on doing so! Michael? Richard! It was your methods that were flawed! Our love for America won't change! Ah! <laughs> Richard! <laughs> this is one eternal flame with your justice! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, you've exceeded the critical point. There's no way out. Mr. President? Mr. President? Come on, Mr. President? No 
problem. I'm coming home, Jody. Tomorrow's gonna be another busy day at the White House. Now, the game should end here, but now that the game is really over, it's allowed to cut loose. First off, for saving all of the hostages and energy cores, you unlock the Moonlight Greatsword Bazooka. Ah, you were at my side all along. a one-shot for anything not in the game's brand new mode, Hell Mode. This mode lets you replay all the previous levels with a much higher difficulty, and completing them gives you a new costume. On top of that, certain levels now have an alien warning, where you can hunt down UFOs and blow them up to capture the little gray man and get a chance at winning a new, incredibly goofy weapon. With that, Metal Wolf Chaos comes to an end. I want more games like Metal Wolf so badly. These short, janky, but evidently heartfelt games like this, Blood Will Tell, Gun Grave, god, they're just exactly what I love. Metal Wolf is a game you can't play without a big dumb smile on your face. The gameplay is simple enough that anybody can pick up and enjoy, the dialogue and scenarios are impossible to take seriously in the best way, and the spectacle is enough to at least get you into a bewildered state from even the most hardened cynic. It's so such a good thing that a game with a premise of playing as the president in a giant mech delivered, because if this game was boring, I would have never forgiven FromSoft. 